you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show that makes big winners out of the lowest scorers. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, uh, my name is Josh, this is Alice and we're both from Taunton. Couple number two. I'm Casey, this is my mum Jude and we're here from Stockport. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Kate. Uh, this is my partner, Richard, and we're from Colchester in Essex. And finally, couple number four. Hi, my name's Will. This is my fiance Jenny, and we're from Cheshire. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's got a brain so big, it needs its own taxi to the studio. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, everyone. Four new pairs. Mm. There should have been a pair returning, but there's been illness, so they will be back. Um, normally, when we have four new pairs, I've noticed the jackpot goes down to a thousand. It just it seems to happen. Yes. And last show, we were playing for four and a half thousand pounds. Oh. It was John and Debbie. Yeah. Playing for, I don't remember what happened. Oh, do you probably do you, do you do. want me to remind you? Please. Oh, John and Big Bucks Debbie. Yeah. Whoa, it was a bonanza. They got through to the final and they did not win the jackpot. Yeah. So we're adding another £1,000. <laughs> did somebody clap that? <laughs> Sorry. Shoes. That's the first. You can tell there's four, <laughs> you can tell there's four new pairs, though. Yeah. 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 Well, literally, yeah. we've never heard of them. We never don't care. Never heard of them and never need to. Now, today's jackpot starts off at £5,500. <laughs> there we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Uh, just remember, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round is the pair that gets eliminated. So your only task, if you like, is to keep your scores as low as you dare. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... Words. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many three-letter words formed from the first ten letters of the alphabet as they could. Quite a lot of finger counting going mm, on. I yeah, think. exactly. Yeah, we're looking for any word in the Chambers Dictionary, please, of three letters that can be formed only using the first ten letters of the alphabet. That's A to J, if my finger counting is gone correctly. I got to. Smart, I made it. Um, you can use uh, any of those more than once if you want, um, but just A to J, nothing else. Three letter words, very best of luck. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's also, you've got to picture them as well. On the floor, maybe. Arrange them. Mm, mm. Nice. My letter palace. <laughs> I forgot about your letter palace. Do you remember my letter palace? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Um, Joshua, listen, I don't want to interrupt the letter palace going on there. Yeah, just trying to picture everything on yeah, the floor. On there. the floor. Uh, yeah. I think your B's the wrong way around. So oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. But, Almost an M. Oh, <laughs> looked quite rude from where I was standing. But anyway, yes, Joshua, tell us all about yourself. Welcome to the show. Uh, I live in Taunton with my uh, partner, Alice. Uh, I work as an online community manager for an online gaming company. Do you deal direct with individual gamers? So, yeah, I, I work as like, the liaison between them and the developers. Do you get suggestions, though, going, yeah, on level six, we think it'd be really good if... All the time, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Sounds quite fun. It, it can be fun. What, I, what percentage uh, of that is useful? It's sometimes useful, yeah. and then other times I have to be the one to crush their hopes and dreams and say, here's why we can't do all of those things. <laughs> Crusher of hopes and dreams. When I asked you what you did as a job, you could have just said that, <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> Saved a lot of time. Now, how is the, uh, how's the letter palace going? So I've got a couple of ideas, and one of which, I'm not even sure if it's a word, but you know, it sounds like it might be a word. Yeah. And I'm going to go with jib, J-I-B. Jib. Yeah, things that come in cuts. Um, and the sailing people, obviously, would know, uh, would yeah. know jibs. Let's see how many of our 100 people said jib. Jib is very much a word. Oh, it's a good score as well, Joshua. Look at that. Down it goes. Down to two. <laughs> Magnificent. What a start to the round and the show. That's a lovely start, Josh. Well played, yes. Yeah, the sail at the front of a ship is also one of our cameras. Yeah. Right there. You're literally... You're sort of cheating in a way. So you're looking directly yeah. at a jib and then saying jib. There we are. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Now then, Casey, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. I'm from Stockport and I work as an ODP. <gasps> What's <laughs> you're that going to ask what for? an ODP is. Yeah. Um, an operating department practitioner. Mmm, I'm only <laughs> marginally clearer. Yes, which department? Which what practice? In theatres. 
In theatres. In the hospital, yeah. In hospital. Oh, you go. led me a I merry dance you, there, Casey. You, <laughs> oh, I, I followed We got it. there eventually, didn't yes, we? Yes, I... Yeah. Oh, literally like pulling a little <laughs> bit of string in front of a cat. Um, Casey, um, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go for something that sounds very similar to jib, which is dib. Dib, thank you very much indeed. Let's see how many of our 100 people said dib. Dib is right. Touch. Dib is right. Two for Jib. What's it going to be, Dib? Four. Oh. There we are. That's another very good answer. Well done. Yeah, I mean, to dip uh, fly fishes, they essentially to you put their bait on the water. That's dibbing. 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 Sounds wrong, doesn't it? Dibbing. dibbing. Somehow, yes. Yeah, or. Oh. I don't know why. A lot of these words, a lot of three letter words sound yeah, wrong, really. Wrong. Jibbing, dibbing. I mean, oh, don't on. say jibbing, but you're right, yes. Yeah, yeah. It sounds terrible. It really does. I don't know it? why, but it does. Kate, <laughs> welcome to Pointless. Thank Lovely you. to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. I come from Colchester in Essex and I work as a practice manager in a chiropractic clinic, um, which is a nice place to work in. Do you know what? On our last show, we had a chiropractor. Oh, OK. Chiropracting, chiropracting, you wouldn't say. Chiropractor, though, which has not been mentioned on Pointless, I think, since day one. Oh. Suddenly, two consecutive <laughs> shows. What about that? Yeah. Back yeah. to back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Kate, what have you got? Well, how, is your, how is your letter palace looking? I was thinking along the same lines as the previous answers, and I'm going to say fib. Fib? OK. Let's see, Fib, how many of our 100 people said that? That goes down to three. Look at these. The grouping is just impeccable, by the way. Two, three, four. And we might as well have done words ending IB, mightn't we? <laughs> yes, to be honest, yeah. A not very serious lie, a Fib. I thought that might score a few yeah. more. I thought that was a more yes. well-known word, Fib to Fib. There we are. Yeah. Fibbing, jibbing and dibbing. <laughs> it's not getting any better. Thank you very much, Richard. Jenny, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. I'm from Cheshire and I work as an accountant for IT systems. Very good indeed. What do you do for fun, Jenny? Um, I love reading and I love musical theatre and singing. Excellent. What sort of, what sort of singing do you do? Mainly ballads, old stuff, um, like Whitney Houston and all the old stuff, Dusty Springfield. Old stuff like Whitney Old Houston. Stuff. I know, yeah. <laughs> That's just so you know, we both died a little inside when you said that. <laughs> so, Jenny, what are you going to go for? So, I'm going to take a bit of a risk, and I'm not sure if it's actually a word, but given the good scores, I think I need to go for it. So, I'm going to go for GIF. GIF? Let's see how many of our 100 people said GIF. I'm sure that's a word. Very good indeed. Down goes GIF. Oh, it's a pointless answer, Jenny. Not just a word, but a pointless word. It adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to 5750 and it scores you nothing. Very well done, indeed. Yeah, well done, Jenny. Not the computer GIF. The computer GIF is capitalised in the dictionary, so we wouldn't allow, but it's just an obsolete form of if. Oh, I've never heard that before. Yeah, I've never I heard mean, it. obviously. But obviously we use it all the time now to mean something completely different, but it oh. uh, wouldn't have been an answer I'm if good. it hasn't already been something else. Gif it hadn't been something else. Gif it hadn't been yeah. something else. No. Yes. So I'm going to maybe, I might affect that from now on. Um, thank you very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Nothing was the best score of the past. Very well done indeed. Then we travel up to Joshua and Alice on two, then up to three, Kate and Richard, then up to four, which is where we find Casey and Jude. Way out in front there, Casey and Jude. What were you thinking? I know. Jude, <laughs> we're going to need something extraordinary from you to, to try and rectify this. Good Got luck it. with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> Will. Hello. Welcome to Pointless. Great to have you. Tell us all about yourself. So I'm also an accountant. I uh, met Jenny at work. I've uh, been together for five years now. But that's lovely, though. How nice to, to find love in the ledgers, Absolutely. as it were. <laughs> um, what do you get up to when you're not accounting? So a big uh, golf. Golf fun. OK. Playing golf, watch golf. Very nice. Um, now, Will, what are you going to go for? These three-letter words from the first ten letters of the alphabet. I'm not sure I'll be able to match Jenny's pointless answer, um, but I might go for jig. Jig, says Will. There is your red line. Let's see how far we get with jig. Jig. <laughs> 
Very well done indeed. Down to two. Superb. Takes your total up to two. A lively dance. Some good scoring going on here. Yeah. Might do some jigging after the show. Oh, yeah. Well, that's OK. Yes, yeah, are you sure? That's, that's perfectly licensed. Yes. Richard, welcome to Pointers. Good Hello. to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. I work for Network Rail. I'm a route control manager. That's the kind of control manager you want to be, isn't <laughs> it? Surely, at Network Rail. W which is your region? What's it take in? East Anglia. So we're based at Romford and we look after the whole of East Anglia. Fabulous. There's a lot of branch lines still in existence up there, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, lovely parts lovely of the little. world up there, yeah. That's fascinating. Now, Richard, you are on three. We are looking at this early stage for a pointless answer from you. Something in the GIF line. Um, yeah, so obviously a bit of a risk needed, so I'm going to go for ilk. OK, ilk. Let's imagine a red line is there. Let's see what happens when we say ilk. I'm sorry, Richard. We've all been doing that, forgetting what the first ten letters of the alphabet are. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah. I'm afraid that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 103. It's a lovely word, but, yeah, it's got, <laughs> uh, it's got the 12th and the 11th letter yeah. of the alphabet in it, I'm yeah, afraid. Yeah. And an L and a K. Oh, yeah. And a K, yeah. Unless you want to spell it with a C, in which case it's still incorrect, but there's only one, <laughs> it's only one letter wrong there. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Jude, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Thank you. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Casey's mum from Stockport. I'm retired. What did you do before you retired? I worked as a digital printer. Very good indeed. And what do you like to get up to these days, Jude? I um, like to swim, eat, drink, oh. drink a bit more. Oh, well done. <laughs> good. What would you like to go for? You're on four, which means we're looking for a, a score of 98 or less. Well, I had a risky one, yeah. but now yeah. he's given me a gift. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go for CAD. CAD, says Jude. Here is your red line, nice and high. Let's see how many of our 100 said CAD. Cad's got round two written all over it, Jude. Down we go. 26, takes a total up to a lovely round 30. Well played, Jude. Yeah, dishonourable person, a cad. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Alice, Hi. welcome to Point. It's great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, yeah, so I am a mad scientist, crazy <gasps> scientist, um, doing uh, science in primary schools with children all across the southwest. Uh, making lots of slime and explosions and rockets and things like that. But that's fantastic. <laughs> and do you know what's really lovely is your hair Thank is going to match whatever the backdrop. So even if <laughs> whichever round you get into, you are going to match. I just have to keep turning round. Just keep so turning the, the full if, rainbow. If it's the persona, I'm, I'm Astro Alice. So uh, cosy Brilliant. hair had to kind of go with it, really. Yeah, um, you're on two, which means you're already through. Joshua set the bar so fantastically <laughs> low um, with his brilliant answer. Now, what are you going to go for? I mean, maybe we could find another, another pointless answer here. Because I'm in quite a comfortable situation, I'm going to go for a really, really simple Risky one. Risky one. Uh, no, simple, simple, I'm afraid. Uh, oh, no, no, but you're free, you're through. You're through, you've got a free pass. You've got a free pass, you're through even on 100. Jackpot, 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 jackpot. jackpot. Come on. No, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to go with did. OK. You know Crazy Alice? You remember yeah. Crazy Alice? Do you remember her? Yeah. Did. Sorry. You're through anyway. There's no red line because <laughs> you're through anyway. Even if you'd scored 100, you'd still have gone through. <laughs> Let's see where we end up with did. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad. <laughs> Six. Yeah, that's all right. Um, well done. Take your total up to eight. Uh, we were so mean to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> loads and loads of pointless answers here. Do you have a good answer? Um, Hadge. Hajj, as in the, uh, the pilgrimage. pilgrimage yeah. It's a pointless answer. Ah, very well done, okay. H-A-J, very nicely done. Very nicely done. I'm going to show you some more pointless answers here. Ah! Ah! Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, all Neighbours fans, of course, remember Dag. Yeah. I'm sure Toadfish was called a Dag many times. Uh, Deb, as in debutante, far, as in on the musical scale, Fi. You could have said G. There's Hajj, uh, Hick as well. There's loads and loads. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. It means it is my sorry task to say goodbye to our first couple, and that couple is Kate and Richard with your high score of 103. I mean, it's only... It's, it's au revoir. We're going to see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. Um, thanks so much for playing, Richard and Kate. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two.
Very well done, everybody. There we are, three of you now still in the game. We got through that round fantastically. Jenny, you were our lowest individual scorer. And Jenny and Will, in fact, you were our, our lowest combined scorer. So fantastic work on that far podium. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Influential women. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Time magazine's 100 Women of the Year. Richard? Yeah, on each board, we're going to show you six clues to women who are on this list, women from the last 100 years. We'll give you their initials as well, but can you name any of these women, please? Six on the first board, six on the second, 12 and all to have a go at home. Good luck. OK, thank you very much indeed. So, we are looking for the names of these people who featured in Time magazine's 100 Women of the Year, and we have got... Jazz singer who first performed the protest song Strange Fruit in 1939, B.H., French fashion designer famed for the suit and range of perfumes that bear her name, C.C., appointed Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court in 1993, its second female justice, R.B.G., author whose novels such as Mrs. Dalloway sometimes included the stream of consciousness literary style, V.W. In 1985, she became the first woman to occupy the top two positions on the U.K. singles chart, M, and screen icon whose final completed film was The Misfits in 1961, M.M. M. Alice. I was thinking I was going to do quite well with this board. Oh, I, th I still think you are. <laughs> I'm quite certain. Unfortunately, the ones that I have in my head, I think, are all the obvious ones, with the exception of one that I know I should know the answer to and has completely flown out my ear. Uh, so I am going to go with Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel. OK, there we are, the double C one there, French fashion designer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel is absolutely right, and it goes down to 68. Yeah, she was the Time Woman of the Year for 1924. They essentially went back, because so many women were overlooked in the Time Person of the Year awards, they went back over every single year uh, and awarded it, and Coco Chanel won it for 1924. Very good. That must have been a fun committee to have sat yes, on. Yes, I bet it was quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Jude. Mm -hmm. What would you like to go for? I'm going to go for the top one, and that's Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday for Strange Fruit, says Jude. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday, absolutely right. Scores you 29. Well played, Jude. Lovely answer. Yes, so they made her the Time Woman of the Year for 1939, and the Man of the Year for 1939 at the time was Joseph Stalin. Oh. So... Uh, <laughs> There's something about alternate histories for you. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Jenny. You're the last person to have this board, Jenny. If you wanted, you could go through it all and fill in all the blanks. OK, well, I don't know the third one, but I think I know the bottom three, but not confident on them all. So I'm assuming VW is Virginia Woolf. The next one, I assume, is Madonna. And then the bottom one, I'd say Marilyn Monroe, which is the only one that I'm totally confident about, but probably the most obvious. Um, I'm going to go for Madonna for the 1985. OK, Madonna, says Jenny. Let's see how many of our 100 said Madonna. It's right. Yeah, it's a high one there. 72 for Madonna. Yeah, Virginia Woolf would have scored you 23. <laughs> would have been a lovely answer. Let's take a look at the rest, though, shall we? Marilyn Monroe there at the bottom. Would have scored you 45 points. And, you know, the Supreme Court She's Justice... Ruth Ginsburg, but I can't remember what the B stands for. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Bader yeah. Ginsburg. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And she's the best answer. Three points. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Jude and Casey. Look at that. Reigning supreme on 29. And then up to 68, quite a long way up, where we find Alice and Joshua. And then up to 72, Jenny and Will. I mean, you knew what would have been the lowest scoring answer of the past, but I'm afraid your choice led you to the other end of the table. Uh, Will, that means you've got a bit of a job to do on the next pass, so good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? 
OK, let's put six more of Time magazine's 100 Women of the Year up on the board, and here they come. We have got the Swedish environmentalist who, at the age of 15, inspired an international movement to fight climate change, G.T., British scientist best known for her contributions to the discovery of the molecular structure of DNA, R.F., Nobel Prize-winning author whose works included The Bluest Eye and Beloved, T.M., U.S. tennis player who's beaten her elder sister Venus in the finals of all four Grand Slam tournaments, S.W. U.S. documentary photographer known for her portraits of displaced farmers during the Great Depression, D.L. And Mexican painter best known for her colourful self-portraits and relationship with Diego Rivera, F.K. There we are, Will. Over to you. Yeah, it's not a great board for me, this, I don't think. I'm unfortunately, going to have to get a good answer to get us through to the next round. I only know two on there. Um, I think they're quite obvious as well, but I'm going to go for the top one, which I think is Greta Thunberg. OK, Greta Thunberg says, Will, no red line views. You're currently the high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 said. Greta Thunberg. That's right. Interesting. 46 for Greta Thunberg takes your total up to 118. Uh, yeah, so she was the Time Woman of the Year for 2019 and in a nice uh, show of how things have progressed. She was the actual Time Person of the Year in that year as well. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Casey, there you are on 29. 88 or less gets you through. OK. I'm going to go for the Nobel Prize winning author and say Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison, says Casey. Uh, here is your red line, nice and high. Let's watch you go through that red line with Toni Morrison. Very well done, indeed. Great answer. Ten. Takes your total up to 39. Beautifully played there on podium two, yes. She was named Time Woman of the Year for 1993, and the person of the year that year was... Well, there's four of them. There was F.W. de Klerk, Nelson Mandela, Yitzhak Rabin and Yasser Arafat, the peacemakers. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Joshua, there you are on 68. We're looking for a target of 49 or less. What would you like to go for? You can talk us through this board, if you yeah, like. Yeah, the last board was slightly better for me. I know a couple on here. I think Serena Williams is the obvious one there. I don't know the bottom two. The British scientist, I'm struggling with her last name. I think it's Rosalind. I'm going to go with Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Franklin says, Joshua, here is your red line. Can you get through that with Rosalind Franklin? Well remembered, Joshua. It was in there. And you are through. There's your reward. Very well done. And that goes down to four. That's a great answer. I think it's the best answer of the round. It takes your total up to 72. Very well played. Well played for going for it as well, because uh, if you had said Serena Williams, you'd have been knocked out, because you would have scored you 72 points. Now the Mexican painter. It's Frida Kahlo. It's Frida Kahlo. She would have scored you 26. And this is the best answer on the board. It's Dorothea Lang. Lang. Very well done if you said that. Two points for Dorothea Lang. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, at the end of our second round, we have to say goodbye to another pair, Will and Jenny. I'm afraid you are that pair. High score of 118. We'll see you again next time. Look forward to it very much. Meanwhile, thank you very much, Will and Jenny. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Jude and Casey, Alice and Joshua. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £5,750. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't boost that jackpot even more by finding some pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many metro stations in Paris as they could. Richard? Yeah, we all know how this works. You'll see six names on the board. Two will be um, metro stations that people have heard of, two will be metro stations that no one had heard of, and two will be metro stations we made up. See if you can find the ones that no one has heard of, please. £250 for each one, so possible 500 if we can find them both. OK, let's see if we can find the pointless metro stations from among this six. We've got Bel Air, Gare du Sud, Poulain, Robespierre, Stalingrad and Tuileries. There we are. Now, which of those do you think might be our pointless ones? Have you been to Paris? Well, I've, been, I've been to Paris. <laughs> I've never used the metro, though. Um, what are we going for? Oh, you... It's been ten years since I was in Paris. I went to so go well. for the bottom one, yeah, too. OK. Yeah? Yeah. Have you got any ideas? Yeah. We're just going to go we're for the bottom the one. same as you. Two of the Rees. <laughs> oh. I don't know what one to go for. We'll just pick one at random. 
I, I reckon it's the bottom and then the third one up. What's the third one? Robespierre. Okay. Yeah, well, sounds, sounds French. We've got one in three shots. <laughs> we'll go for the French sounding ones, yeah. shall we? <laughs> Jude and Casey, what are you going to go for? Uh, we're going to go for the bottom one, which is Tuileries. Tu Tuileries. Tuileries. The Tuileries. Shall we see if that, if Tuileries, <laughs> if the Tuileries is a pointless <laughs> metro stop? Oh. Tuileries, it's a, it's a, it is a metro stop. Is it going to be a pointless one? That's one. Oh. Goes down to one. Oh. The Tuileries. Now, Alison Joshua, what are you going to go for? Do I go third one up? Yeah, go for it. You're going to go for Rob Spear? Yeah. OK, let's see if that is a pointless metro stop. It's a metro stop. Oh, it's a pointless one! Very well done indeed. Well done. That's fantastic. Richard? Yeah, very well done. Named after Maximilien Robespierre, one of the leaders of the French Revolution. And the Tuileries is by the, uh, the Tuileries Gardens. Okay. So, there's two incorrect answers up there, and there is one pointless answer left. I'll give you a couple of them, because I know you'll know a couple of these. Bel Air yes. uh, is a station. Would have scored you one point. Mm -hmm. Gare du Sud. Is uh, in Gare du Nord. Answer. There's no, Gare du Nord and uh, Car uh, Gare de l'Est. Um, so, of uh, Poulain and Stalingrad, one of those is a pointless answer. St I know Stalingrad is. Yes, a, you're absolutely is a right. Named station, after uh, yeah. the Battle of Stalingrad. That's the pointless answer. In Poulain, it's uh, Amelie's surname in Amelie. Poulain. Oh, that's nice. So, Stalingrad and Robespierre are the pointless answers. Very well done if you got both of those. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. You managed to find a pointless answer, which means you've added another £250 to today's jackpot, taking it up to a lovely round £6,000. But who'll be playing for it? Let's find out in the head to head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that £6,000 jackpot. You're now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Here comes the first question, and it is all about food from the southern United States. Richard. Yep, five pictures of food from the southern United States. Now, we'll give you alternate letters of the names of these foods as well, but what are they, please? Thank you very much. Let's reveal our five foods, and here they are. We've got A, G, I, S. B, L, V, R, U, H. C, J, M, A, A, A. D, H, S, P, P, I, S. And E, F, I, D, G, E, N, T, M, T, E. There we go. Jude and Casey, you're our golden couple, so you get to go first. Oh. OK. Yeah, we'll Jude. just go for C. We'll go for C, Jambalaya. C, Jambalaya. OK, Jambalaya. Now then, Alice and Joshua. Do you um, want to talk us through the rest of that board? Yes, A is grits and E, fried green tomatoes. Is it? Something like that, yes. Uh, or is B's it... liver. Oh, I've eaten that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, E. Is it tomatoes? It's tomatoes or tomatoes or something like that. There's an L before the E, I think. You can say that then. <laughs> <laughs> Go for E. Yeah, what do you think, tomatoes? Yeah. OK. Go on. <laughs> Fried green... Tomatoes. Yeah. For, for Fried green, green tomatoes. tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, I got there in the end. Fried green tomatoes. But none of this L nonsense. OK, good. Right. So we've got jambalaya and we've got fried green tomatoes. Jude and Casey have gone for jambalaya for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said jambalaya. Jambalaya is right. 61. <laughs> Alice and Joshua, meanwhile, have gone for fried green tomatoes for E. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It is fried green tomatoes. <laughs> and it wins to the point. Very well done indeed. Look at that. Down it goes. Down it goes to 29. And it means after one question, Alice and Joshua, you are up 1 0. Um, now, A, this is one of the things that every single film you ever see, every single American sitcom you ever see, every single animated show, they mention these things. Grits. Grits. 
and it would have scored you 35, but I never really knew what they were. But it's like sort of semolina. Yes, like kind of coarsely ground um, corn with butter and milk. They have them for breakfast. I've had them. I've had them in Charleston where they put they chop chilies up in them. Fry them. Not for breakfast. Yeah, you for breakfast. You can't have chili for breakfast. Yeah, what are you? you can. I'm not adventurous enough to have cocoa pots for breakfast, let alone chilies. <laughs> chilies. Oh. Well, Grits would have scored you 35. Let's leave B for the moment and go to D, because we can sort well, of see what, what the I word is. I want to say hush puppies. Yeah, that's absolutely right. They are hush puppies. I was then going to think maybe it's hash puppies and maybe... Oh, but, yes, no, but hush puppies. No, and hush. They're, they're cornmeal again, deep-fried cornmeal dumplings. Oh, they look nice. They we do look, look nice. I think we like our hush puppy. And it would have scored you 16 points. They look delicious anyway. They certainly do. I'll say that. And this last one, things okay. that don't sound delicious, I have to say. Made from pork liver, spices and, again, cornmeal which they're obsessed yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, what do you think it might be? So it's liver something. Liver mush. Liver mush is the answer. Whoa, oh, America, come, come on. That's not a word from haute cuisine. <laughs> it's really not, is it? Liver mush. mush. Yeah, uh, it was a pointless answer. So even anyone who's been to America has not had liver mush. I mean, the most appetising thing on that plate is it's a close run through between the plate itself and the celery. And for goodness sake, have some butter on that bread with your <laughs> liver mush, is all I'm saying. It's going to be very dry and a bit... <laughs> OK, here comes your second question. Now, Jude and Katie, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Alice and Joshua get to answer first, so very, very good luck. Here it comes. It's all about... effects. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five descriptions now of things that are commonly known as the something effect. We're going to give you alternate letters of what the effect is as well, but what are these effects? Mm, thank you very much indeed. This is fun. We've got... Apparent improvement in health due to a treatment that contains no real medicine. P-A-E-O effect. The splitting of a spectrum line into several components by the application of a magnetic field. Z-E-A effect. The tendency for an impression created in one area to influence opinion in another area. H-L effect. In chaos theory, the phenomenon whereby a minute localised change can have large effects elsewhere. B-T-E-F-Y effect, and change in frequency of a wave as the source and observer move towards or away from each other. D-P-L-R effect. There we are. Alice and Joshua will go first. Oh, yeah, you're right. Right, draw that side Yeah? Yeah, we're going to go for the bottom one, the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect, say Alice and Joshua. Now, Jude and Casey, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? No. I only know another two on there. Um, butterfly effect and we'll have to go for the top one, placebo effect. OK, placebo effect. So we've got Doppler versus placebo. Now, mm -hmm. Alice and Joshua went for the Doppler effect. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Doppler effect is right. Down goes to 30. Not bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jude and Casey have gone for the placebo effect at the top. Let's see how many of our 100 said placebo. <laughs> it's right. Ooh. That scored you 40. Very well done indeed. That means Alice and Joshua, after only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2-0. Very well done. And because I'm further away from the column from you, yeah. Uh, the Doppler effect, actually, well, you hear it differently to me. You hear it I much suppose. higher pitched than I do. Oh, really? And also because it's always going past at speed. Yeah. Um, now, there's a couple of good answers here. Butterfly effect is the biggest scorer. That would have scored you 44. Now, do you know this one, the tendency for an impression created in one area? Often, in a group of people, if someone in a group is good, it is assumed that everyone in the group is good, for example. Halo. The halo effect, absolutely right. And that would have scored you 14 points, and this is a real curveball. He won the 1902 Nobel Prize for Physics, uh, and it is the Zeeman effect. Zeeman effect, and it's a pointless answer. Very well done, if you said that. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, that means the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, our golden couple <laughs> coming into the head-to-head, -head. it just means we know what to expect next time. When we see you next time, we can see you go right the way through and maybe through to the final two. So uh, yeah. let's look forward to that. Jude and Casey, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> but for Alice and Joshua, yeah. it is now time for our pointless final.
Congratulations, Alice and Josh. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, which at the end of today's show is standing at £6,000. Well, I said, Alice, you had colour <laughs> to match every particular round, and uh, here Just we are. So it has proved. Right. Yes, please, if you would. Yes, yes. that's marvellous, <laughs> lovely. Well, here we are in the final round. First shot at it as well, straight through. It means we've only had you on one show, which is not enough, obviously, from our <laughs> point of view, but it's great news for you, and it, even better, we've got a lovely jackpot for you. What is going to help you take that home? Oh, uh, I mean, I do a lot of singing, so music bits, um, that sort of thing. Christmas songs, um, musical theatre, those tend to be the bits that I concentrate on. Um, yeah, you say I've got a brain like a skip, so... Uh, yeah, just you just pick up all random ran stuff, Random don't you? stuff, yeah. Um, random stuff's good, though. It's exactly yeah. what we need. Maybe, yeah. Like, I, I want to say that like, maybe something like geography based, but then something is going to come up there geography based, and I'm like, no, not that, definitely yeah, not that. Yeah, that's why I'm hoping not for science, because primary school level, sure, if you've got how to make slime, how to make a rocket go off, anything like that, I'm, I'm good. Um, anything higher level than that, my brain hasn't been doing that for quite a while now, so. <laughs> okay, well, listen, you have to choose from the four things that appear, as you know. Let's see what we've got for you today. Here it comes Mercury Prize winning rap albums, the year 1958. Emmerdale, international sports umpires and referees. Awesome. How is that? Well, definitely not sports. No. I don't think either of us would be <laughs> particularly good on that. How are you with rap? Yeah, no. No, no, no I don't think so either. Um, um, I've never watched an episode of Emmerdale. Oh, see, I, I was like, people were telling me, oh, no, revise Coronation Street. They should have told me to revise Emmerdale. It's the uh, way it does. So. Yeah, do we just take a risk and whatever 1958 is? See, whenever I'm watching at home, I see something obscure like that. I think, oh, come on, go for that one, because I want to know what's behind it. <laughs> so I think we should... Like, I think it's going yeah, to have to be, we'll, isn't we'll it? appease those people and go yeah. for that, yeah. OK, 1958. They heard you. They heard you. <laughs> uh, very best of luck, and thank you from us for not saying that's before my time as well. It's much appreciated. <laughs> uh, we're looking for any of the following things, please. We're looking for any of the cast of the very first Carry On film, which came out in 1958, Carry On Sergeant. We are looking for any act that had a UK number one single in 1958, and we're looking for anyone who scored a goal in the 1958 World Cup finals, please. So, carry on, Sergeant, number one singles and goal scorers. Very, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot of £6,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest, I don't know any. Yeah, you, I'm going to go gonna... for singles. Let's see if anything I can do. Yeah, I'm going to rely on you here, I think. Next. I'm going to need your help with that as well. OK. Uh, 1958, so that's... Uh... Oh, come on. You said you were going to get some. No, I don't know any of the top <laughs> and I don't know any of the bottom, so it's going to have to be the middle. Uh, it's either that we just take random guesses at names and hope. I don't think that's yeah. the best approach. I think that's the only approach there is left. Um, <laughs> Axe had a number one single in 1958. Just name any. Beatles. Yeah, I mean, the, like, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's going to be pointless, is it? You may as well just, just guess random names at that point. Um, I think that's like Elvis. Um, Elvis around that mic. I, I, I want to say names, but then, uh, then there's people going to be, no, that's, that's a decade in the, the future. Things, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't know, Michael Jackson, Beatles. Uh, Jackson 5. Ten seconds left. Um, yeah, it's going to be all obvious ones, isn't it? It is, yeah. This is Michael Jackson and... What's Michael Jackson doing? Like? I don't know. I don't know, I'm making an idiot of myself. <laughs> that, I'm afraid, is your time up. That minute, I'm afraid, is never long enough. What can you give me? Let's have three answers. OK. Uh, Jackson 5. Jackson 5. Um, Beatles. The Beatles. And Billie Holiday. And Billie Holiday. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? I'm going to guess Billie Holiday. Billie, Billie Holiday. Holiday. Least likely to be pointless. Beatles? Let's put the Beatles and the Jackson <laughs> 5 can go in the middle. I OK. They're going to be pointless. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got the Beatles, the Jackson 5, Billie Holiday. Well, there we are. <laughs> three answers on the board. Uh, you never know. One of them could turn out to be right, and who knows, maybe pointless. Um, yeah, there might be a bit of time travelling involved for a couple yeah, of them, but there we yeah. go. Yeah. There we are. What would you do <laughs> if you were to win £6,000? What would you like to do with it? 
Um, I would like to treat myself to an embroidery machine. I've been doing lots of sewing and making toy dinosaurs and things, and I really want to be able to put names onto things and make pretty pictures. Well, that would be nice. Joshua, how about you? Oh, we're, we're trying to save for a house at the moment as well, so I think part of it would possibly go towards that, and then well, the, the classic answer of maybe a holiday as well. Yeah, we've got a two-year-old, so he'd quite enjoy a little trip away, I'm Lovely. sure. OK, well, let's find out. Your first answer was the Beatles. In this case, we were looking for... Well, in fact, all three cases, we were looking for acts who had a UK number one single in 1958. You've gone for the Beatles. Let's see... Let's see what happens when we say the Beatles. Yep, I think, as you suspected, not the Beatles. Um, and if not the Beatles, then let's see what happens when we go for the Jackson 5 as well. The Jackson 5, 1958, UK number one. Yep, again, for, for reasons we I think we know, uh, that's an incorrect answer. But we're now, we've landed on Billie Holiday as your third and final answer. Let's just see. You never know. Sometimes people have success in, in charts after they've died. Um, you know, that, that, that can happen. I don't know off the top of my head when Billie Holiday died, but you never know. It's, it's perfectly possible. Shall we find out for £6,000 how many of our 100 people said Billie Holiday? If it's pointless, you'll be taking that jackpot home. Oh, bad luck. We went out in style. Yeah. <laughs> bad luck. Um, well, there we are. I mean, fun, but I'm afraid that was a very tough category for yeah. you and you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, but you do win today's pointless trophy, so very well done for that. And you're forgiven, of course, for going for 1958 as well. Thank you. It's been on the ball for quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> 1958. Michael Jackson was born in 1958. So that would have been a very early, mm, a very early hit for him. Uh, Beatles' first hit was 62. Um, Billie Holiday, you're asking when she died, 1959, funnily oh, enough. Oh, there we are. So it, it could have been, but she never had a top 40 single, oh. Billie Holiday. Um, let's take a look, shall we, at the pointless answers. We'll start with Carry On Sergeant. Dora Bryan is a pointless answer. Eric Barker, Jack Smithhurst, Terence Longdon, all the kind of regulars in Carry On scored points. So Kenneth Williams, Hattie Jates, Kenneth Connor, Bob Monkhouse is in that film, Charles Hawtrey, William Hartnell is in the film, Shirley Eaton, Terry Scott, Bill Owen and Norman Rossington, all of those scored points. Uh, everyone else is a pointless answer. Axe, who had a UK number one, this is a tough category. Conway Twitty was Christmas number one in that year. Lord Rockingham's uh, 11 with Hootsmon. Tommy Edwards, Victor Mona, Marvin Rainwater. Elvis Presley, the biggest scorer there with 30. Jerry Lee Lewis as well. Harry Belafonte, Perry Como, Everly Brothers, Connie Francis. They all scored points. And the players who scored a goal in the 1958 World Cup. Some uh, home nation interest here. Um, Bobby Collins and Jimmy Murray of uh, Scotland were pointless answers. John Charles and Terry Medwin of Wales were pointless answers. I think a few people might have gone for John Charles. At home, uh, Peter McParland of Northern Ireland was a pointless answer. And Vava of Brazil was a pointless answer. So the top scorers there, Pele, Eustace Fontaine and Tom Finney. Uh, one point also for Johnny Haynes and Ivor Allchurch. Very well done. You got one of those pointless answers at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thank you, Alice and Joshua. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot <laughs> today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £7,000. <laughs> Join us then, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>